Welcome everyone, this is Loki Lord, and today I'm going to show you how to make a cauldron server for DNS. So as MCPC got renamed to cauldron, um, there has been some, I can also say a lot of changes on the how it works, how you set it up, and yeah, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is, I already made this folder where you put in your server stuff, I will start from I will start fresh and show you how to configure everything. So let's start off getting what we need. For that we start up AT launcher. Go to packs. Go to DNS tech pack or yeah. Click on create server. Pick the version to install. I will use the latest version. You can either select optional mods, click on select recommended for to pick out some mods for you, or you can just click install without any of the mods picked out, and you can just install your own mods, that's your decision. Let it download, of course. <clears throat> okay. Take down AT Launcher. Open up where you install the AT Launcher, ATL servers, and then DNS Tech Pack 05650. In there, you either want to Keep the folder there. What I want to do is actually take all the files and drag them over. So I have them here. And of course, if you do not want to use Cauldron, then this tutorial is over for you. This is how you set up your server. You can just click on Launch Server, and that's all. If you still want to know how to port forward and open the server to the public keep on watching because I will explain it while I explain how to set up Cauldron for this. <clears throat> so let's get started taking or getting our hands on Cauldron. Open up the browser, I use Chrome. Then you can either look for Google Cauldron I already have it in my address bar. Cauldron Minecraft Forge.net. I will put this link in the description. Here's 164 downloads. This is for if you want to use DNS. On 164, since 172 isn't out yet, so you can just click on 164 downloads or downloads. Downloads is for 172. I will just open both links. This is for 172. While this is for 164, 17 builds are not here anymore. <clears throat> On 16, it's still called MCPC Plus whatsoever. I know that is a bit of confusion, that's why I'm going to explain how to set up Cauldron, not MCPC. If you want to look on how to set up MCPC 1 for 1 1.6, you could just go back to my old video. I will there I explain how to set up MCPC. However, if we're going for Cauldron that is on 1.7, we want to go on to the Cauldron downloads. Click on 172 latest. I never take the recommended version, I don't know. Because it never worked for me anyhow. And it's also the recommended version 16 and 16, they're both the same. You take installer slash win if you go if you're on Windows, installer if you're on Linux or Mac. You can also use this on Windows, of course, I will do that too. We'll download the jar file, which we're going to use. Yes.
<coughs> Sorry. And let this finish off. Okay. So cauldron kind of works now like forge does. If you go onto cauldron and click the jar, you do not have to drag it in anymore. You have to double click it on 1.7. And you, and as we already made this folder here, and by the way, this is for 164. Imagine it to be for 17, okay? The 1.7, uh, it will look, by, by the way, the same, just the mods in here will be there for 17 and the configs. Else it will be the same. <clears throat> and then you just go on install server and pick the folder to install to. You can either take the folder where your stuff was already in or you make a new folder. Once uh, there are already files in the directory, it doesn't matter. You can still do that. But that is for 164. This here, the folder, the mods, DNS, it's all for 164. But what I'm doing right now is explaining Cauldron for 172. It works the same way, just that it is. Um, I'm cannot I cannot start the server to show you because this is 164 and Cauldron does only work with 172 MCPC is for 164. So what I'm gonna do is just delete this folder, make a new one called also Cauldron tutorial and install. Cauldron to it. That would then be the fresh folder with nothing in it. And when I have installed this, I just open up the folder and I can either start the server if I want to, or I then from in 1.7 will drag over all the mods from the AT folder in there and that kind of stuff. Uh, while that is going on, I will show you how to port forward on your router. So, as I assume you want to open your server for the public, you want to port forward to your, your router to your, to the public. So what you do is first you set your computer aesthetic IP. You open up the command line, type ipconfig slash all. Look for your either, you can do this on cable or on, uh, wireless, I'm going to use my wireless LAN adapter Wi-Fi. Look up your IP for IPv4 address or IPv6. IPv6 is better, but IPv6 is not yeah, supported by every uh, ISP, internet service provider, like AT&T or here for, for mine it's um, Canal Digital. He doesn't, they don't support IPv6, so I'm going for IPv4. Um, then you just keep that window open, click on Network Center, right click there, open the Network Center, Adapter Settings, double click on the Wi-Fi or the cable one if you if you don't have Wi-Fi if you're on cable on Ethernet. Click on Properties, scroll down to IPv4, and go over from here where it says IPv4 IP address. Uh, automatically to set up uh, the IP yourself. <clears throat> then you will copy the IP before that is here 192.168.0.198 that is for my computer it will Im <clears throat> will absolutely differ from everyone's computer so let's say yours is 192.168.1.100 for example, then you enter that here in the first bot line. Subnet mask is uh, root specific, but that is also defined here 255, 255, 255. And then a the gateway 192.168.0.1. It might be 11 or uh, 138. That depends on the router. <coughs> oh god. And then the DNS server that is that you prefer. That is preferred. 192.168.0.1 for D-Link Brothers and 192.168.0.98 as alternative for D-Link. This is only for D-Link. Um, D 
the, the first DNS server, as you see here, is marked here. The second one, as you can see here, is normally not here, but at, it, it is here because I defined it here. I did define it here. That's why it's also shown here as 98.2. For you, will it will probably only give you one line. You, all, you also don't need to provide the alternating. So it's just that. Click on OK. Click on OK. Click on Close. You will probably disconnect. For a uh, for a short amount of time, and then you're back on the on the internet, and then you open up your standard gateway that we had in the CMD. That is one nine two one six eight zero one. Close that in the meantime. Log into your router. Also, if you need help with this, or it's better if you don't know what this is, ask someone that is very good in this kind of stuff, maybe a friend or I don't know, you can also just ask me over the uh, over the comment section or mail me if me if you need to because this is a bit this is not that easy if you think that's how it is. And for D link it's advanced. For Linksys it's what um protocol settings or port forwarding, there's an own section for it. And I don't know for your router, for my dealing router, it is advanced. Click on advanced. Head over to virtual server or port forwarding. I'm using virtual server for this because port forwarding is a bit for larger games. For example, if you use, uh, let's say, if you use Steam, Steam is best at port forwarding because Steam has many has a lot of uh, ranges between uh, public ports and private ports so it's best that you use virtual server only for one port like minecraft then you define your IP that you did set on your computer to be static for me it's 192.168.0198 and the minecraft port for your server that's either 25565 or after how you define it, for example, you can change the port yourself. But then, yeah, that's that doesn't matter. And the protocol type has to be of both. And then you click Save Settings for me, for me at least. It says Settings on a Linksys router, for example, or a TP Link. It would be Reboot Device as you click Save. So yeah, and when you save the settings, you're done here. You have port forwarded your computer to the outside. And then let's keep keep on going with the cauldron. After you've done that, I recommend getting something called Bucket GUI. I'm just going to copy it from my folder. Okay, you can get Bucket GUI. Just Google it. I recommend it if you are going to host it on your computer. If not, you have to follow another tutorial. Yeah. So for Bucket GUI, you just launch it. Click on Super Start. Pick Spike it. Not Bucket Vanilla Remote JSON API or Generic Java. It has its gen a special reason why you're going to choose Spike it because it's better for Cauldron to interact. Cauldron uh, goes on Spike it and Spike it goes on Bucket. So you're going for Spike it then. And then you're going for the Java version. Um, this will absolutely not work with Java six and it will only work with uh, Java 7, 64 bit, or Java 8. Um, 32 bit might work, but you can't go, then you cannot define the RAM. So that, that will be a very, a very good high problem for you. So I recommend put, putting it on Java JRE 764 bit. Or you can also, if you have Java 8, for example, alternative Java path. Then define your RAM. I put it on 2 gigs and minimum 1 gig and then you define a jar file where it lies for it, for us it's cauldron 172 and so on the max param size is something you should define I did only add this argument not uh, previously 
um, in Java 8 you do not have to define this anymore, in Java 7 you do. So at least 512 recommended is 1, 1G or 1024M. And that's all for this part then. Then just click on start and let the server boot up. It will then, as you can see here on the left side, it will start generating the folders. It will download the libraries it needs. So we just let it launch up. Okay, as you can see, it's already generating the world, and we're also part forwarded. Else's else the server would have told us that we cannot launch it. Okay, it's done. So when Yep, yeah, and that is how uh, now you can play with your friends on your server. You just have to send the, them your IP. You just go on onto your internet browser and look up your IP. Uh, I cannot look up mine because of security reasons. But anyhow, this is how you do that for now. If you want, then of course you can add your mods, which are already added by DNS then. So, and then you add, add your plugins which I have in my bucket folder which we are going to use soon for our DNS server so you can just use them or any plugins you want to and put them in here you cannot reload a cauldron server it it works on bucket UI I don't know why that is so um, and here, here you see it actually it doesn't work Reload not allowed on a cauldron so server, and that's because of the mods. You cannot reload mods and plugins at the same time. That would take so uh, too long. So you have to restart your server, stop it, and start it or kill it. And we're just going to stop the server. And then you just put in your plugins. I recommend installing a plugin that is called Plugman, Plugin Manager. With Plugman you can uh, manage your plugins while the server is running. You can unload and load plugins and install plugins while the server is running. You do not have, do not have to reboot your server every time you're removing a plugin or installing a plugin. So Plugman is very handy for this sake with bucket at the same time you're using mods. So yep, that was everything for now. If there are any questions, you can just send send me a post message or ask me in the comments section but this is basically how you set up a cauldron server not mcpc but cauldron so yeah thank you for watching and i'll see you next